So I'm not going to lie. I um, I was having some trouble thinking about what the biggest takeaway for me was to go over for the day 30 check-in. And I, I really couldn't come up with anything in terms of big, big takeaways because I feel like I sort of give everything that comes at the spur of the moment or that becomes like a big thing for me. I feel like I already end up talking about those things in, in, in like, you know, my previous videos. So I thought, you know what, today we are going to stick to the status quo and we're just going to go over another topic. And if I could you know, naturally come up with a big takeaway in these next couple of minutes that we're recording, then that's icing on the cake. <laughs> um, now today at the gym, I, <clears throat> I was working out the, I was doing leg curls and glute presses uh, right after the other and I was actually kind of surprised at how easy it was to do one after the other um, which just you know for me it has me just kind of tripping about tripping out about you know the different muscle groups and just how much of a difference the the movement makes and which muscle it affects so like, you know, in, in having like full energy to go ham for both the glute press and the leg curls, I was like, well, those are two separate muscles. Um, what would happen if those were, you know, imbalanced or something? Or what if I didn't really work out my leg curls at all and I just stuck to, you know, just glute presses? Uh, you know, in, in that form of thinking... I came across the topic of muscle imbalances. Uh, so what I wanted to talk about today or how I wanted to or how I structured today's topic was how we can identify um, whether or not you have a muscle imbalance and how to correct it. Um, obviously I'm going to go, or we want to go over what a muscle imbalance is and it's when you have a disproportionate amount of strength between opposing muscle groups. So, and, and not really all the time, it doesn't have to even be opposing muscle groups. So like an extreme form of, uh, muscle imbalance is if you, um, and my, I don't mean to put you on blast, man. I'm sorry, but my younger brother, uh, this kind of happened to him because uh, at one point, all he did was just dips, right? <laughs> so like day in, day out would do just dips and wouldn't do really anything else to sort of like even out his chest. Um, so it developed really, <laughs> the way it developed was he looked really, really wide right here. But then everything else was kind of like just slanting down. So it had a very, very weird effect. Now, um, again, that's a very extreme. I wouldn't even, I don't even know if that's in a, a very extreme, but that is in my mind an extreme example or a great example rather of a muscle imbalance. So obviously how, he, how I recognize that is it was very visible for me, right? But how my brother should have recognized it in himself was, you know, auditing himself and, and sort of looking and auditing the routine. If, I mean, if I was doing, you know, a lot of the same exercise all the time and I saw only one muscle developing or one muscle growing as opposed to the other ones, uh, I mean, just knowing myself, that's something I would have definitely tried to or attempted to correct. And there are downsides for sure to uh, muscle imbalances. Um, for example, like neglecting um, a muscle imbalance can lead to risks like uh, poor posture. 
for example, it can lead to joint pains and as a result can increase your susceptibility to injury. And then as always, we don't really want that. So we have to find ways to recognize these imbalances, um, whether it's from observing your uh, postural assessments to um, observing your body's response to uh, certain types of exercises. And one of the ways that I found um, that you can <clears throat> sort of practice recognizing an imbalance is um, engaging in a comprehensive workout routine that addresses uh, various muscle groups, whether you're doing compound or isolated exercise. And then um, as you're doing this exercise, so for example, let's say you are doing a row. Um, instead of doing a row that requires you to pull just um, one piece of equipment, uh, try doing the wires where you have two sources to pull from and pull both of them at the same time. And then while you're doing that, um, observe your body to see if, even though they're at the same weight, are you struggling to pull one over the other? Is your right side stronger than your left? Is uh, your left side stronger than your right? Um, is there any discomfort? Uh, are there any notable, noticeable um, shifts in like your range of motion when you're pulling inwards? Um, all of those can be signs of muscle imbalances. And upon recognition, the next step is correction. And everybody's body is different. Uh, so you wanna tailor your approach based on what your needs are. And whether that's um, incorporating targeted exercises to uh, focus on the weaker muscle groups, I believe um, no content you called it muscle correction specialization. Um, you can strengthen your stabilizing muscles and um, you can also stretch to improve your flexibility because I believe the yeah, other flexibility does play some role in muscle balancing. Like if you're not as flexible with your left foot as opposed to your right foot in your full range of motion, you could be limiting um, how much strength your left foot can have over your right foot because you're not doing your full range of motion exercise with the left foot as opposed to uh, your right foot. And if you require, like if it's, if it's a muscle imbalance because of something that requires um, actual correction, I don't want to give advice on that. So um, I do suggest seeking advice from um, either like a chiropractor, a physical therapist, or um, any other kind of fitness professional. I'm just a bro-splainer, <laughs> remember. So don't, don't listen to anything that I have to say to an, uh, to an extent, right? Um, and then if you are experiencing a muscle imbalance already, just remember that corrective exercises should become an integral part of your routine, or at least that's what I read. And uh, to also remember that quote unquote, consistency is key. And on that note of consistency, let's go over the workouts for today. Like I said yesterday, I was gonna go pretty ham today on the decline bench to which I did. I, um, I was able to get up to plates and tens. So that was a pretty fun session. Uh, so for the decline, decline presses, we did about 40 reps, 20 um, with 35s, 10s, 10 of them with plates, and then the other 10 with plates and 10s. The low rows, I did 40 reps and I got up to the 143 again. Leg curls, uh, 40 reps and I got up to 140 for the weight. <clears throat> Excuse me. Glute presses, we did 40 reps of those. Sit-ups, I was able to do three sets this time using the, uh, the 10 pounds and then 10 at my body weight for a total of 40. 
rear deltoid raises for 40 reps and then the back extensions for 40 reps. Pretty good on the water and food as well for the day. We are at six out of eight pints of water. And then I have a sandwich um, that I'm going to finish, which is gonna put me at a total of 2,400-ish calories and about 150 grams of protein. And it's, Tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow already is check-in for the fitness challenge that I took part in. But I don't know if I wanna check in tomorrow just yet, just because the last time I checked in was on a Sunday. So a true two weeks would be checking in on a Sunday. So that would sort of give me two more days to go like super, super ham, um, see if I can cut more fat and uh, gain more mass in terms of like muscle muscle pound, um, or in terms of like, yeah, like muscle pounds, I, um, I'm gunning for it. So I'm going to check in on Sunday and then I will give an update. I was kind of excited cause I wanted to give an update tomorrow on where my in body scan was, but it's all right. We could wait, right? Good things come to those who wait anyways. So Sunday it'll be here and we'll just have to figure Two more things to talk about for Friday and Saturday until then. <clears throat> and for the closing quote for today. In the symphony of fitness, conquering muscle imbalances create the harmony that orchestrates peak performance. Embrace the diversity of muscle engagement, recognize the cues, correct the imbalances, and let your strength resonate throughout your fitness journey. Address, address imbalances for in balance, true strength thrives. See y'all tomorrow.